Hey guys, Dan Booknook Nugget here, and uh, it's time for this, I guess. Um, it is the end of February, not quite as of when I'm currently filming this. But I guess I'm going to try to be consistent since I'm making this like a series of videos. So we're going to talk about some films that I had watched since the last time I talked, spoke at you all. I guess you could say that. Um, yeah, so um, I really wasn't watching too many films like since the last From the Nook. I was watching a lot of TV series. Um, one being the You that's on Netflix. Um, I saw the first part of season four, really, really loved it. It kind of had a clue, kind of mystery whodunit feel to it. Um, really, really strong story. Um, don't think that that's based on any book by Caroline Kepnes because I think she only wrote the three books. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that, you know, let me know down below. But yeah, I've been watching that, can't wait for the part two of that, which I guess comes out sometime in March. Um, watching a few other TV series, but not consistently, like I'm not like binging them, I guess you could say. So I'm not really going to mention that, because if I watch an episode here or there, do I really feel like it's going to be something that I'm going to remember to talk to you about? But no. Um, because I'm over 50% done with uh, The Perks of Being a Wallflower, I decided to re-watch the film, and I'm really glad I did, because I really, really enjoyed the film much more than the book, and I don't know if that's saying anything, but I'm going to try to explain why I feel that way. I feel like the film has a better way of coming across with the story or the idea that the author, because the author wrote the screenplay and directed the, the film. So, like, I feel like it was a better medium for him to try to tell this story, and I, I had to Google it, because it seems like it was written by the author about his life, and yeah, I mean, it really comes across that way. One of my friends on Goodreads had kind of thrown out the idea that maybe he has uh, high-functioning autism, which, yeah, after thinking about it that way, that does make sense. But, yeah, I thought that... I'm going to go into this more when I go to review the book, but, like, being, you know, there were some differences between the film and the book, and, I, and take take in mind that I have not finished reading the book yet. I'm probably about 70% through the book, but, yeah, I, um, I think the film was way better. I gave it a four and a half, I think stars on letterbox i really really enjoyed the film that much more than the book then i saw a stinker of a film that was about vampires it was on hulu it was called slayers it's from 2022 um, i don't even remember the actress's name but she's from the zombie land films she's the little blonde girl from those movies but she was in this and she dies like a short time into the film but it was horrible not only was it, it was like, I don't even know if it was low budget because it seemed to have some good special effects, but just a bad story in general. Just, oh, like the, the main character was a vampire hunter and he was kind of uber cringe and I get it. It was supposed to be a dark comedy because it's a comedy horror film, but it was bad. It was bad. I give that one like a two, two out of five star rating. I just didn't care for it. Um, a couple of my coworkers had thrown it out to me. They mentioned it to me. And I was like, oh, I'll check it out. Um, and then another film that I saw that was really, really good. This is my first time having seen this. I did not see the theatrical release. It was Megan. Um, if you have Peacock, you can see the unrated version on Peacock. And I don't know the difference between the unrated versus the theatrical but I love this film. It stands alone enough as a science fiction film. But then it just kind of throws out all these horrific elements that people always ask. And they always mention when it comes to artificial intelligence. 
and humanity, you know, what are the things that we could go wrong with that? And I think it did a really good job of expressing those concerns that people have with artificial intelligence. And it was horrific at the same time. It, you know, it kind of came across as, you know, almost like this, you know, relentless machine that was just, you know, determined. So, yeah, I thought it was really good. That's another one I think I gave a four or four and a half star rating. I don't remember exactly, but it was really, really great film. You're going to have to go check that one out. Those were all the films I have seen so far. And I guess before I end this video, I should show you the books that I picked up this month. So we'll get to that, but I'm going to tell you about the books I'm currently reading. You know, We'll get to that part now. Okay, and I can't believe that this show had slipped my mind, so we're backtracking, going back to me talking about the stuff I watched since the last From the Nook. I can't believe I forgot to tell you guys about Kath and Kim. Um, this is an Australian comedy series that's from, like, the early 2000s, and, yeah, so, like, it was around for 20, 20 years ago. I think they did nine seasons and a bunch of specials, but... I started watching this, um, somehow it came up as a recommendation, and then I saw that one of the guys from Little Britain had said that they were a major influence on him, so I'm like, oh my god, well, I fucking love Little Britain, so I'm gonna have to go check out this series. Um, I think I'm on maybe the second or third part, I think I'm on the third part to that series, uh, because it's where Kim... And her husband have a baby. But it's really kind of funny. Um, sometimes it kind of reminds me of Trailer Park Boys. Because like, you know, like if you watch Trailer Park Boys, Ricky, he always says like words wrong. Or he thinks that like another word is something else. He's just kind of that little stupidity kind of stuff. Where he kind of says the wrong thing. It's just kind of like, you know, like humor like that. It's kind of like. Low bro, I guess you could, would it be called, considered low bro humor? I don't really know, but it does have like kind of well placed like little one liners. I think it's funny. It's not like a you know hilarious, but it's you know yeah, that's kind of funny. I, I am learning some different things about Australian culture through it, so it is interesting at the same time. But yeah, let's get on with the books that I am reading currently. So of course I'm still working on The Perks of Being a Wallflower. I am almost done. I, I think that seeing the film really is going to be a motivating force to try to see if this is the ending is the same as the film since I rewatched it. So yeah, still working on that. I had finished, literally today I just finished The Blue Beetle. Jimmy Reyes, uh, this is the Jimmy Reyes Blue Beetle. I, I had prior read the first, like, small portion of this as a smaller trade paperback. And I was really wanting to read the rest of the story. And I don't know why it took me so long to get to it. But, yeah, it turns out this is okay. It's only a three-star book. I'm not going to review it because it was, it was all right. I'm not even going to bother with it. Um, and then I decided to pick up uh, Death Knight's Dark Metal. Or, no, Dark Knight's Death Metal, sorry. Uh, yeah, this is a part of the Dark Knight's storyline from DC. I like when they do alternate reality kind of stuff. It's like what I'm kind of into. Uh, I just finished the second book in the Murderbot series. I forgot, is it Martha Wells, I think, is the author who wrote that? Yeah. Um, I had read the first book a very long time ago, and I one of the things i got to say about this book series is they're not, if you are a sci-fi reader, they're not going to be something, it, I'm going to say they're not brilliant, they're not like, I'm not going to say they're going to go down in the annals of sci-fi history. I just, I feel like there's something to read if you want, like, they're like almost like action movies. That's pretty much what I'm going to say the Murderbot Diaries are. They're kind of like a, doesn't take a lot of thought kind of to read them and enjoy them. So they're more for enjoyment, entertainment purposes, I guess you could say. 
And then after that, I started reading uh, The Sentinel. And The Sentinel is an old book, I think from the 60s or 70s, but it's really dated. You can tell by the things they talk about. It's really kind of dated. They like to talk about frigidity. And then what is it? There was some deal with lesbians living on one of the floors of the apartment house. It's just, it's kind of... <laughs> I'm not really enjoying it, but I, I feel like I've got to finish reading it because it is one of those classic horror books, I guess. Um, still working on On the Savage Side by Tiffany McDaniel. I am a little bit further into that. I'm over halfway through with that one. Yeah, I think that's it. And then I think, I don't know if I can't get to it today or maybe I'll do it another day, but I will show you guys the books I picked up recently. So Okay, a few days later, but here we are. Let's get the book haul portion of this video out of the way. Um, we're going to start with the one and only comic I bought this past month. And that was Excalibur Volume 4. Um, I have yet to read any of the new Excalibur yet. But I'm collecting them and I plan on getting to them sometime in the future. Um, I picked up a David Brin book. This is Sundiver. And the only reason I wanted to pick it up was because the, the back, the synopsis for it sounded really interesting. Um, it's about how, you know, another species has, like, decided to start colonizing other worlds, I guess, and all this stuff before mankind had done it, and it's kind of like, you know, like the viewpoint from their side. Sounded interesting. Um, I've only read one David Brent book, and that was The Postman. Um, I saw this one. And some of these, mind you, I'm going to flat out tell you that the only reason I got them was because I was kind of bored and they looked interesting. Like this one, Charles Dillon, uh, this is From a Whisper to a Scream. I, this name for this author sounds familiar, so I was like, you know what, that could be an okay read. And then I got this one. It's a collection of short stories. This is a scholastic book. This is, a, I'm assuming this is YA or it's a children's horror book. But um, the reason why I decided to get it was because of the names of the stories, the authors that were featured in this. Uh, Neil Gaiman and Caitlin Kiernan, you know. Garth Nix, I've read him before. So I was like, yeah, this might be good, even though it's a kid's collection of stories. And then I got really super excited when I saw this one. Vitla May Miss, uh, this is one of her newer ones. I think this is the short story collection. It's the As the Night Devours Us. This is from St. Rooster Books. I've never heard of that publisher. But I was, like, really excited to see this. Like, because uh, I found this at, a at one of my local libraries. Like, somebody had donated it. And I was like, oh, dude, I'm like, I'm definitely grabbing that one. And I was really super excited to see that they had it. Uh, these next three books, I don't know that I'm going to read them. I don't know what I'm going to do with them yet. I, they are, they're historical fiction. Some of them are historical fiction. One of them, I think, is just literary fiction. But they sounded interesting enough where I was like, you know what? These sound potentially good, so, uh, yeah, I might just end up donating them or selling them. I don't know what I'm doing with them yet. The Good Lord Bird by James McBride. And then, uh, The Twelve Lives of Samuel Hawley by Hannah, Hannah Tinty. <coughs> And The Sweetness of Water by uh, Nathan Harris. So yeah, that's all I got. I didn't really get like a ton of books. And to be honest with you, most of these books, they were free. Except for a few. But yeah, I mean, in picking up free books, whether I choose to donate them or sell them or whatnot, you know, it's no loss for me. So, I don't know. We'll have to see. I definitely should 
read that um, Excalibur series sometime. I gotta get on that. <laughs> I really gotta get on that. But that's it, guys. This is the the latest from the Nook. Um, I'm probably gonna have to edit this and upload it sometime soon. I'm gonna throw down some links to Amazon. I'll probably link the Excalibur four or maybe Vic LeMay's book, so maybe you guys can order a copy for yourselves. That way I get a very small percentage of everything that's sold through that link. And I'm also going to throw down my coffee link if you wouldn't mind donating to help support my channel. Um, if you're new here, you want to see book reviews, book recommendations, and more kind of book chat videos like this, then hit that subscriber button and hit that notification bell while you're at it. This has been Dan. This is, this is what I got. It's what I got. Till next time, guys. Later.